Hey, couple interesting bash related things today. So first, this is a pretty simple bash script. Check an input. If it's greater than 100, we say that's a large number. Otherwise, we'd say it's a small number. The first time I looked at bash, which is not that many years ago, uh, I felt like it looked very strange to me. I think a lot of people feel like this. If you've you know, maybe learned ba uh, JavaScript or, or Python or PHP, you come to bash and you think this looks pretty weird. But the thing that looked the weirdest to me was that you finish your if statements with phi. When I saw that the first time, the thought that actually went through my head was whoever designed this language didn't know what they were doing, which is a ridiculous thing to think. I know that especially now, now that I know that it was written by somebody working at Bell Labs, but that was the thought that went through my head. Like, how could you possibly do that? Why would you do something so terrible? Um, and there's a good reason for that and we'll get to it soon, but it's kind of fun to imagine what would it look like if Bash didn't use this syntax and it used like a more traditional C style syntax. So, okay, so down here I've got what Bash would look like if it used a more uh, C-like syntax, right? One that we're kind of used to with like an if statement. And then at the end of it, we've got a curly brace, another curly brace like that. Okay, so why on earth would Stephen Bourne, the person who wrote the Bourne shell, decide to do if statements like this? In a Stack Overflow answer, uh, a guy named WFJM, great name, uh, calls it uh, mirrored words. So if and phi or case and is sack comes from Algol language. Um, and it was Stephen Bourne who decided to put those in there. And in an interview with Stephen Bourne, which I'll have in the description, he explains why he made this decision, but it, it's actually pretty simple. So it comes from a language called Algol, right? Algol 68, which is a language he really liked. Um, if you look at if, it's easy to tell that this ends at the phi, but in a C-like language, this terminating brace, it's really hard to know what, what is that terminating? Is it terminating an if clause? Is it terminating a for loop? Especially if things get nested, but here you know exactly what it's terminating. So maybe it's not actually not that bad. I don't know. He also said that they don't have tools like we have now where it's easy to find the matching brace. So you actually had to kind of do that yourself, right? So uh, terminating phi for him was better. All right, so let's actually look at some algol here. We've got int for while and then do odd, right? So it ends uh, a mirrored word right there. Here's a case statement, so case and isac. And here's an if statement, if, then, else, phi. And looking at like a comment in algol, right? They use like a hash, just like we do for a lot of languages today, which is pretty interesting. Uh, you know, if you get in early enough, you get to make all the big decisions and uh, that's just kind of stuck. Okay, next thing, and this is one that you can actually use. So there's this uh, penguin here, you know, unclassy penguin cd dot dot slash dot dot slash, and the classy penguin cd dot dot enter cd dot dot enter, um, you know, whatever. But a guy I follow on Twitter said, I'm guilty of this, so I mapped control n to run cd dot dot in my input rc. When I saw this, my mind was, because <clears throat> I didn't really even think about like, yeah, you can keybind things just in bash. Right, so if we if we take a look here at his uh, input RC, we can see this line exactly right here. Okay, so I'll get into that in a second, but let me just show you what it actually does here. Okay, so I'm in my code directory, and if I wanted to go up a level, I could do cd dot dot, right? But instead, I can also now just do Control N, and I go up a directory. Control N, Control N. That I think is actually super useful. Uh, so let's see how that works. So if you are using bash, which I am, there's a file called input RC, or you can make input RC if it doesn't exist. And it's going to have all your read line uh, specific things. Bash uses a program called read line to actually do its input. Uh, so that's where you make all these decisions here about what you want to add to your input. And so I've got it right here. So what this is saying is control N, what is that going to do? So after the colon, it's what it's actually going to do. CD dot dot, and then new line. Okay, because you actually need a new line here. Um, right, but if you don't put in the new line, you can actually just throw something into your command line. So I have control E doing echo. So let's take a look at that. So if I do control E, hey, right, I can throw an echo right there. I actually don't really have a good use for that, but I think it's kind of cool. Now, last one right here, control F, it's gonna load up my ASCII aquarium, and then I can you know, watch all these fish swim around. And of course, I'll have a link in the de description here for this too as well. Hey, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have anything that you think is kind of cool, 
uh, please leave a comment below. Uh, I'm always interested in learning new things about Bash. If I got anything wrong, of course, leave a comment. I don't want to be telling people things that are incorrect. Hope you're having a great day. Bye.